Hey guys, welcome to the show today. We're checking out the RF levels of the iPhone 17 Pro. I've also got a Samsung S25 so we can compare and see how things changed back in the day. Samsung was the darling. I think they got sued and then they lowered their RF levels. Of course, things may have changed. They have changed. They're, they're both just as bad as each other. Spoiler alert. And <laughs> yeah, I'm just looking at the figures now. It's crazy. In my day, I was told don't stick your head next to a microwave oven when it's running because of the exposure to this radiation stuff. But nowadays these phones, they go higher and I don't even have 5G enabled. So before you had to put it on 5G for it to go really high, but now 4G is now the new 5G and they've just gone way off. So we're gonna be comparing the iPhone 17 Pro with the iPhone 16 Pro to show you the difference. There is a difference. This is just on 4G maximum and also checking in the S25. So let's jump in and see the results. All right, this is a fun new notice. Exposure to RF. So I wonder if that's changed. Lasers. All right, so this is the 16 Pro as baseline. I'm gonna do two tests. One is purely with Wi-Fi on, so let's just get that going. And with Wi-Fi, it's downloading 500 megabits per second, and we're getting 136 milliwatts. That is on the downward spike. And when it comes to uploading, we're also getting 145. So probably the base level when it's doing something is 150. And when it stopped downloading, we've shot that down to microwatts levels or UW. UW's microwatts, it does shoot up every now and then to around five milliwatts, but generally it's not doing much. So I'm gonna turn off Wi-Fi this time. Now we're downloading only five megabits per second, and we're also shooting up to 137 milliwatts, 140 milliwatts on a download. So it seems like the maximum this phone is getting is 150 when it's on Wi-Fi, and slightly lower it's on 4G. This, this one isn't the 5G. Luckily, we don't have that service here. So let's switch over to the 17 Pro. So we're purely on Wi-Fi at the moment and we're around 90 to five to microwatts actually. It's gone down, so it also is modulating this one. Just microwatts is good, so that means it's not doing much. It's around one milliwatt at the moment. Let's start up Wi-Fi, so we're downloading a video on YouTube, we're browsing the internet, and we're spiking up to 150, pretty low, and that was just with the Wi-Fi on and no SIM in the actual phone. So let's switch the SIMs over and see if having a mobile SIM makes a big difference. So we are on 4G here with the new SIM. So let's turn on Wi-Fi one more time. So we just hit 293 milliwatts per meter squared. This is on 4G and it is actually higher than the levels you get if you stick your head right next to a running microwave oven. And now we're gonna test it again and see what the milliwatt rating is. And we're actually in 285 milliwatts per meter squared. So that is just massive. That's jumped from 150. We've got an extra 100 milliwatts bouncing around on this device, almost 300 milliwatts per meter squared. So there's definitely a noticeable difference on this phone. That's just purely on Wi-Fi. So 150 is shot back down. I'm gonna try it one more time because that was a bit of a crazy result. Yeah, over 250 milliwatts per meter squared, 280. 250 milliwatts per meter squared. So that is just a massive jump. They've increased the amount of RF they use use with the SIM plugged in. So that's just crazy. I'm gonna turn off Wi-Fi to see if we can just narrow it down, to see if it's just a SIM. And with the SIM, again, we're getting over 280 milliwatts per meter squared, 260. So we're now just increased it by an extra 50%. And finally, on a lighter note, I've got the Samsung Galaxy S25. Let's see how that one is. So let's turn on everything. I've got mobile services, I've got Wi-Fi. So I'll start off in Wi-Fi only on the S25. And we can look just 400 megabits per second. And that one is also getting 265. That's purely on Wi-Fi, so that's massive. So even these new Samsung S25s, they're about the same as the new iPhones. They've just been a generational leap in the amount of RF consumption on these phones. I'm gonna turn Wi-Fi off. I'm gonna run it one more time. And 270 milliwatts per meter squared. So these new phones that are coming out, they're just an extra 100 milliwatts per meter squared. 
consumption of RF. So there's a lot more frequencies bouncing around. So it's something to be aware of when upgrading to the next generations of phones. They don't just upgrade the processors to make them faster. They also increase the amount of RF radiation that's bouncing around. A few years ago, the WHO, they were recommending at most 100 milliwatts per meter squared as the maximum. But now, of course, so we're <laughs> higher than that. So one thing you can do to be your friend is rather than keep your phone right next to your face or in your pocket, you can just move your phone further away. So let's just see how distance affects this scenario. We're about a meter away and it's at 20 milliwatts. Actually, maybe it's more like two meters away and it's uh, 10 milliwatts. So maybe two meters is your friend. So uh, yeah, good luck. One good thing about these phones is they're faster though. And look, they got some cameras. So hope you guys found this video useful and enjoyed the show. Mm -hmm.